Hi everybody, it's Miss Pam from the Andes Public Library and welcome to our story time. It's Wednesday, September 16th and oh, a little chilly out there, but last week we didn't get to the book Abby Yo-Yo Returns uh, by Pete Seeger, so we're going to try that this week and I chose a couple of more loosely music related the song and dance man by Karen Ackerman and Lily backstage by Rachel Isadora and the two things that these children in these books have in common is that their grandfathers uh, were or are performing musicians so but let's start with Pete Seeger's Abby Yo-Yo Returns by Pete Seeger and Paul Dubois of illustrated by Michael Hayes One day, a little girl played her drum as she marched around town. Poompity poom poom, poompity poom poom. Her father played the ukulele. Her mother played the flute. The three of them made up a family band. If there was a wedding or a birthday party, the little girl and her parents were always invited. But their little town was in trouble. Over the years, it had grown quickly. The valley that was once covered by forests was now bare. Every spring, the town had floods. Every summer, the town had droughts. Something had to be done. The townspeople put their heads together. If we build a small dam, they said, we could catch the spring rains and save the water for the fields in summer. Looks like they've cut down a lot of trees. After careful planning, the town started to build the dam. Everybody had to pitch in and dig, dig, dig. But guess what happened? They struck a boulder. It was bigger than it looked at first. There it is. The townspeople thought they could dig around it, but the more dirt they removed, the more rock they uncovered. The boulder was enormous. They tried pulleys and levers and winches. The boulder didn't budge work came to a halt. Now in this town they still told stories about the giants who lived in the old days. And one of these stories was about the giant Abby yo, -Yo. They said he was as tall as a tree and could eat people up. But the little girl knew that long ago her father and grandfather had saved the town by making Abby yo, -Yo disappear. Papa said the little girl, I bet Abby yo, yo could move that rock. Her father laughed, I suppose he could. Then why not bring him back, she said. Grandpa still has his magic wand. Once Abby yo, -Yo moves the rock, zoop, zoop, Grandpa can make him disappear again. Bring back Abby yo, -Yo said her mother, the giant that eats people up. We can make him lots of good food so he won't eat us, said the little girl. And if we run out of good things for him to eat, asked her mother. Sing him lots of good songs, said the little girl. He won't get mad at us. Songs, said her father. That might not work this time. But if we don't bring back Abby yo, -Yo said the little girl, we'll never get the dam built. So that afternoon, the family went to see Grandpa. Bring back Abby yo, yo Grandpa exclaimed. A hungry giant is very dangerous. But no one else can move the rock, said the little girl. Perhaps you're right, said Grandpa. He opened his trunk of magic things and pulled out his wand. Let's see if this dusty old thing still works. And with a zoop, the little girl's drum suddenly disappeared. Hey, Grandpa, get that back. Zoop, the drum reappeared. I guess I still have the magic touch, Grandpa said with a giggle. Over the next few days, everybody in the town cooked their best recipes and practiced their best songs. And finally, they were ready. Oh, look, everybody's singing and cooking together. That looks like so much fun. Grandpa built a special fire out of special wood that made a special kind of smoke. Then he waved his wand and recited the magic words. Zzzzoop. There was Abby Yo-Yo, big as ever, big as a tall tree. 
with his long fingernails and his slobbery teeth and his stinking feet. Women screamed, eek! Strong men fainted, oh! Abba yo yos returned. Abba yo yo yawned and stretched. Oh, I'm hungry. <laughs> the townspeople brought out platters of spaghetti, tofu, chicken, steak, shrimp, rice, veggie, fruit, and all kinds of good things to eat. Abby Yo Yo opened his mouth wide. Yoke, a whole spaghetti platter gone. Yoke, a tray of strawberry shortcake. Soon Abby Yo Yo had eaten everything. Yum, the giant rubbed his tummy. The little girl bravely walked up close. Abby Yo Yo, are you still strong? Of course, ro roars Abby Yo Yo. Strong enough to lift that huge boulder? So Abby Yo Yo picks up the enormous boulder and throws it high in the air. Up it goes, 100 feet, 200 feet. Down it comes. Crumph! Hooray for Abby Yo Yo! People hug each other. They dance. Dogs bark for joy. I'm hungry, bellows Abby Yo Yo. But the food's all gone. Abby Yo Yo frowns. The little girl grabs her drum. Poompity poom poom poompity poom poom. Her father starts playing his ukulele. Plinkity plink plink. Her mother joins in on her flute. Doodly toot toot. Everybody begins to sing. Abi yo yo, abi yo yo, abi yo yo, abi yo yo. Can you sing that, ready? Abi yo yo, abi yo yo, abi yo yo, abi yo yo. I like that too. It's my song. Abi yo yo bi yo 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 yo. Abi yo yo bi yo 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 yo. The band plays faster and faster. Abi yo yo abi yo yo abi yo yo abi yo yo. Oh, abi yo yo groans. He lay down and closed his eyes. Soon he was snoring. Now's our chance, whispered the little girl, but where's Grandpa with his magic wand? He was right over there, her mother pointed. Oh no, cried little girl. Grandpa, are you all right? I'm okay, said Grandpa. The boulder just missed me. But where's your magic wand, the little girl whispered. I'm not sure, he said. Here it is, said the little girl's father. Everybody looked first at the broken wand, then at the snoring giant, then at the little girl. You got us into this, the townspeople said. Now get us out. There's only one thing to do, said the little girl. Let's make Abby Yo Yo lots of good food, and then he won't want to eat us. And if we sing him lots of good songs, he won't get mad at us. So in time, the little town learned to live with its giant. Abi Yo Yo slept in the barn with his head sticking out to one side and his feet sticking out the other. He even learned to brush his slobbery teeth. And he got so fond of the little girl and her parents that they became like a family. They even helped him wash his stinking feet. And the townspeople? Well, with Abi Yo Yo's help, they built their small dam. Most important, they never forgot the need to share good food, and they never forgot how to share good songs. And the last anyone saw, Abi Yo Yo was happily planting new trees. Abi Yo Yo, 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 Yo 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 Yo, Abi Yo 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 Yo. The end of that book. Abby Yo Yo returns. Okay, now we're going to learn a little bit about the old days of vaudeville. The Song and Dance Man by Karen Ackerman, illustrated by Stephen Gamel. You know, a long time ago, uh, oh, about 100 years ago, even, even less than that, because television really didn't come along um, 
you know, the average person didn't have a television in their house until the 1950s, 1960s. So, and radio was very popular in the 1920s and 1930s, especially during the Great Depression. But before that, we didn't have anything to listen to or to watch except for the people around us who made music. And vaudeville was came before Broadway. Vaudeville was um, alive and well in New York City, and I even know some people who had performed on, in vaudeville. So everybody wanted a little entertainment, but they had to go see it live. So... Grandpa was a song and dance man who once danced on a vaudeville stage. When we visit, he tells us about a time before people watched TV back in the good old days, the song and dance days. Supper in an hour, Grandpa calls from the kitchen. I wonder if my tap shoes still fit, Grandpa says with a smile. Then he turns on the light to the attic and we follow him up steep wooden steps. Faded posters of Grandpa when he was young hang on the walls. He moves some cardboard boxes and a rack of Grandma's winter dresses out of the way, and we see a dusty brown leather-trimmed trunk in the corner. As soon as Grandpa opens it, the smell of cedar chips and old things saved fills the attic. Outside are his shoes with the silver half-moon taps on the toes and heels, bowler hats and top hats and vests with stripes and matching bow ties. We try on the hats and pretend we're dancing on a vaudeville stage where the bright lights twinkle and the piano player nods his head along with the music. After wiping his shoes with a cloth he calls a chamois, Grandpa puts them on. He tucks small white pads inside the shoes so his corns won't rub and he turns on the lamps and aims each one down like a spotlight. He sprinkles a little powder on the floor and it's showtime. We sit on one of Grandpa's woolen blankets, clap our hands and call out, Yay, Grandpa! The song and dance man begins to dance the old soft shoe. His feet move slowly at first while his tap shoes make soft slippery sounds like rain on a tin roof. We forget that it's Grandpa's dancing and we can all hear it. All we hear is the silvery tap of two feet and all we can see is the song and dance man gliding across a vaudeville stage. He says, watch this, and does a new step that sounds like a woodpecker tapping on a tree. Suddenly his shoes move faster and he begins to sing. His voice is as round and as strong as a canyon echo, and his cheeks get rosy as he sings Yankee Doodle Boy, a song he knows, excuse me, from the good old days. There are too many dance steps and too many words in the song for us to remember, but the show is better than any show on TV. The song and dance man stops and leans forward with a wink. What's that in your ear, he asks, and he pulls out a silver dollar out of somebody's hair. My grandpa used to do that. He rolls his bowler hat down his arm, catches it in his hand, and flips it back up on his head. Know how to make an elephant float, he asks. One scoop of ice cream, two squirts of soda, and three scoops of elephant. We've heard that joke before, but the song and dance man slaps his knee and laughs until his eyes water. He tries to wipe them with a red hanky from his vest pocket, but the hanky just gets longer and longer as he pulls it out. He looks so surprised that we start laughing too, and it feels like the whole attic is shaking. Sometimes we laugh so hard the hiccups start, and Grandpa stops to bring us a glass of water from the bathroom. Drink slow and hold your breath, he says, or I'll have to scare you. Once our hiccups are gone, he gets the gold-tipped cane and a black silk top hat from the trunk. He lowers his eyes and tips the hat, and he's standing very still. All the lights are turned low except one that shines on his polished tap shoes. It's the grand finale, so the song and dance man takes a deep breath. He lifts the cane and holds it in both hands. Slowly, he starts to tap. His shoes move faster and faster, and the sounds coming from them are too many to make with only two feet. <laughs> He spins and jump into, jumps into the air, touching the stage again. He kneels with his arms spread out, and the silk top hat and the gold tip cane lie beside his side at his feet. His shoes are still, and the show is over. We stand up together and clap our hands, shouting, Hooray! And more! But Grandpa only smiles and shakes his head, all out of breath. He takes off his tap shoes, wraps them gently in the chamois cloth, and puts them back in the leather trim trunk. He carefully folds his vest and lays the top hat and cane on it, and we follow him to the stairway. 
Grandpa holds onto the rail as we go down the steps. At the bottom, he hugs us, and we tell him we wish we could have seen him dance in the good old days, the song and dance days. He smiles and whispers that he wouldn't trade a million good old days for the days he spends with us. But as he turns off the attic light, Grandpa glances back up the stairs, and we wonder how much he really misses that time on the vaudeville stage when he was a song and dance man. So, now, Lily backstage. Let's see. <coughs> Every Friday, Lily's mother picks her up after ballet class, and they go home for dinner. But tonight, Lily's going to eat at the theater. Have fun, her mother tells her. First, Lily goes backstage and says hello to Harry the guard. Hi, Lily. I bet you know I know who you're looking for. Why don't you check the rehearsal room? Lily takes the elevator to the third floor and looks into the orchestra rehearsal studio, but it's empty. How do they know which music Stan is there? Whis Lily whispers and giggles. Actually, you don't really know. And most of the time, if you get to orchestra rehearsal early, you if you end up with a wobbly stand, you, you try to trade it with somebody else before they get there. Because <laughs> nobody wants the wobbly stand. <laughs> <clears throat> she decides to look in on the second floor, and on her way, she sees some of the dancers in the ballet company rehearsing. She'd like to stay and watch, but today she doesn't have enough time. She goes on past an open door. Hi, said Tony, the stage manager. Wow, Lily says, we're so high above the stage. I must check the scenery from up here, and then I have to change 30 light bulbs, he tells her. Lily goes downstairs. When she walks past the makeup room, she pauses to watch Cecilia put on her makeup for the Lilac Fairy. Some dancers take 10 minutes to put their makeup on, and some dancers take more than an hour. Dancers learn to apply heavy dramatic makeup so that they can be seen from the last rows of the audience. So foundation stick, powder, mascara, eyeshadow, lipstick, blush, the Lilac Fairy from Sleeping Beauty, the court dancer, Little Red Riding Hood, Bluebird, Caribous and the Queen. And the reason why they have to put on so much makeup is because all of the stage lights shine down on them and if they don't have a lot of makeup on it makes them look like ghosts. They have white faces so they actually have to put on extra makeup which doesn't look so good in the sunlight trust me. So <laughs> then she walks past the wig room where hats and head masks are also stored those would be great for Halloween, Lily says to herself and laughs. On her way through the costume room, Lily war waves to Margaret, the wardrobe mistress. She sees some of the younger students from her ballet school and remembers when she danced the Sleeping Beauty last year. Now she's too big for the costume. She goes to the canteen to look around. Hi, Lily, says Gabrielle, Lily's favorite ballerina. Are you dancing tonight, Lily asks. Yes, says Gabrielle, but I always like to come here to relax before a performance. Some company members attend regular school and have homework to do. These company members are good friends and have a lot to talk about. And some of the younger dancers eat a snack. Lily wishes Gabrielle good luck and then goes downstairs under the stage. This is spooky, Lily says to herself. I wouldn't want to come down here to get my instrument. She quickly goes up the stairs and looks in the prop room. This is wild, she exclaims, looking at all the props for the performances the company will dance throughout the year. One hour to curtain, Lily hears, Tony announce over the speakers. She hurries to the stage. Suddenly she stops. She hears a baritone horn. Lily steps in front of the curtain. There you are, Grandpa. I've been looking all over for you. I went to get us dinner. I hope you like pepperoni pizza, Grandpa Max says, smiling. Max and Lily eat sitting on the orchestra pit. Then Lily hurries backstage because tonight she's going to watch the performance from the wings. Every time she hears the baritone horn, she smiles because it's her grandpa. When the performance ends and the curtain goes down, Lily meets her grandpa Max in the orchestra pit. You were great, grandpa. Someday, Lily, you'll be dancing on stage and I'll be playing for you. And then we can have pepperoni pizza every night, Lily says and gives grandpa Max a big hug. Okay, that's all we have time for today. I hope you 
enjoyed our musical stories. And I'll see you next week on Wednesday for more stories from the Andes Public Library. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.